Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. In the last lecture, we finished chapter four, and in this lecture, I want to talk about the problems at the end of that chapter. So the first two problems are really to get you to focus on some of the details that I went through rather quickly in uh, developing the solution of the linear equation, e to the uh, x dot equals ax, a is a constant, the solution is e to the at times the initial condition. Okay, so the first problem is going to give you some good practice with mathematical induction, which uh, you always need to brush up on from time to time. The second problem is to get you to um, to uh, go back and look at the derivative with respect to time of e to the at. And you might also want to look at Appendix B, where I have another proof of what the derivative of this is. So the next two problems. This, this is this is a nice problem, and it's fairly easy. In fact, a lot of the problems I have, well, in this chapter for sure, and in other, in other chapters, are really easy if you know the right way to look at them. And that's one of the reasons for choosing the problems in this way. Uh, a lot of mathematics is like that. It's Often it's not as hard as you think it is. You tend to make it hard. And if you look at it in the right way, it's pretty easy. So, we know now what the solution of this problem is, e to the at x naught. So I want you to show that the solutions of this equation exist for all time. Okay, that'll give you, there's several ways of thinking about that, but, uh, and if you can't do it in general, the way I like to build up to it is think about it in, in simple cases. Simplest case would be a one by one. It's not a matrix, but start with that. Two by two. Okay, do that case. And then you can see how you can go to the general n by n case. Then show that the solutions are infinitely differentiable with respect to the initial condition. In general, we're going to want to, in many applications, we will want to expand about an initial condition. Well, we expanded about a solution. It's kind of the same thing. But an initial condition may be a bit different. We want to see if trajectories, how they evolve near initial conditions. So this is an important property to know about. One, one other thing that I that is worth mentioning here is this linear equation, x dot equals ax. What about equilibrium? Let's look at this as a as a, <clears throat> as a vector field in its own right. What about equilibrium points? Well, x equals zero is an equilibrium point. Are there other equilibrium points? If a is invertible, no, that's the only equilibrium point. Well, if it's not invertible, that means it has to have some zero, zero eigenvalues, and then the equilibrium points would occur as lines or planes of equilibrium, very degenerate cases. But this is the thing about um, linear systems. In general, the origin is the only equilibrium point. One of the distinguishing features, many distinguishing features of nonlinear systems as opposed to linear systems is they can have multiple equilibria and they can be different, be um, different attracting sets with um, different basins of attraction that compete with each other in some sense. And there's a very interesting story there. Okay, I love these last two questions to give to students. A little bit devious. They're easy questions. But this is a good example of uh, you look at it at first, and then you think, oh, that's got to be hard. So let's look at number five first. x1 dot equals zero. x2 dot equals zero. I just wrote it as a matrix equation. But it's x1 dot equals zero, x2 dot equals zero. 
Describe the invariant sets. Sketch the phase portrait. Is the origin stable or unstable? Why? Well, if you just read those questions, you think, oh, this is going to be a hard problem. It's simple. Every point, no point moves. So you can construct invariant sets like crazy. Every point is an invariant set. Um, take any line you want, take any circle, take any squiggly shape, it's an invariant set. Sketch the face portrait, well, it's just nothing moves. Is the origin stable or unstable? It's stable, Lyapunov stable. If you start near it, you stay near it. Nothing moves. Okay. So, uh, you know, that was uh, just made you think about these things, hopefully. Now, this one's a little bit more tricky. I ask you the same, the same three questions. But this is x1 dot equals x2. But x2 dot equals 0. So x2 is a constant. Nothing moves in x2. And everything moves with a constant speed in x1. So everything moves along a horizontal line. And how fast does it move? Well, it depends on how far you are away from the x2 axis. Sorry, the x1 axis. x2 equals 0. All right. So this is a very easy one. You can sketch the phase portraits. Is the origin stable or unstable? It's unstable, because if you start close to it, you can move away. Sketch the phase portrait. So this is, a, this is a nice, simple exercise. Both of these are really kind of to, uh, you know, it's, it's like to clear your palate before a gourmet meal, which uh, awaits you for the rest of this course. Okay, so that's it for now. Bye, everybody.